Peptides are essential to biological processes, acting as hormones, neurotransmitters, and signaling molecules that regulate vital physiological functions. Their therapeutic potential has spurred advancements in solid phase peptide synthesis, SPPS, a technique that enables precise and efficient production of complex peptides. SPPS has revolutionized medicine, research, and biotechnology, paving the way for novel peptide-based therapies and scientific discoveries. This video will provide an overview of the basics of peptide synthesis, including key peptide terminology, approaches to peptide synthesis, and SPPS process and terminology. Where else to start if not with the term peptide? A peptide is a short chain of amino acids linked together by peptide bonds. Here is a simplified depiction of bradykinin, a peptide that plays crucial roles in inflammatory response, blood pressure regulation, and pain signaling. Each lettered circle represents an amino acid, and the link between each circle represents a peptide bond. Amino acids are small organic molecules that serve as the building blocks of proteins and peptides. Each amino acid consists of an amino group, NH2, a carboxyl group, COOH, and a specific side chain, or R group, which determines an amino acid's unique properties. There are 20 standard amino acids, each having a specific R group, name, three-letter abbreviation, and one-letter abbreviation. Though amino acids with other R groups exist, both nature-based and man-made, these 20 standard amino acids are by far the most common. Depicted here are both the chemical structure and one-letter code representations of bradykinin. Notice how the different one-letter codes represent different R groups. Peptides are commonly described based on the number of amino acids they contain. A dipeptide, also referred to as a dimer, consists of two amino acids linked by a peptide bond. A tripeptide, 3-mer, has 3, a tetrapeptide, 4-mer, has 4, and so on. Our example peptide, bradykinin, is a 9-mer or nona peptide. A peptide bond is a covalent bond that forms through a condensation reaction between the carboxyl group of one amino acid and the amino group of another. The resulting amide bond links amino acids together in a chain, forming the backbone of peptides and proteins. Notice the highlighted peptide bonds here in bradykinin. The end terminus of a peptide is the end of the amino acid chain that has a free amino group, NH2. It is typically written on the left side of a peptide sequence. The C terminus of a peptide is the end of the amino acid chain that has a free carboxyl group. It is typically written on the right side of a peptide sequence. When it comes to transcribing peptide sequences, the process is fairly simple. Peptide sequences are written from the N-terminus to the C-terminus, reflecting the natural direction of peptide synthesis. Each amino acid is represented by either its three-letter or one-letter abbreviation, arranged in order. This standardized format ensures clarity and consistency in scientific communication. For bradykinin, we could write the sequence in either of these formats. Recombinant peptide synthesis involves producing peptides using genetically engineered organisms, such as bacteria or yeast, that express the desired peptide from an inserted gene. While recombinant synthesis is useful for long sequences and proteins, it comes with high cost and time requirements and is incompatible with sequences requiring non-standard amino acids or peptidomimetics. Liquid phase peptide synthesis LPPS, is a method where peptides are assembled by chemical means while suspended freely within a solution. While this approach is compatible with sequences requiring non-standard amino acids and peptidomimetics, it is both labor and time intensive, requiring purification after every synthetic step. Solid phase peptide synthesis, SPPS, is a method where peptides are also assembled by chemical means 
but are tethered to a solid, insoluble support within a solution. Like LPPS, this approach is compatible with sequences requiring non-standard amino acids and peptidomimetics. Unlike LPPS, because the peptide is attached to a solid support, the tedious purifications and isolations required by LPPS are bypassed. While resin beads are the most commonly used solid support, other specialized solid supports exist including discs and membrane sheets. SPPS is the most widely used method of peptide synthesis because it is efficient, scalable, and versatile. SPPS resin beads are insoluble solid supports that anchor a growing peptide chain. A resin's core is typically polyethylene glycol, PEG, polystyrene, PS, or a combination of the two, PEG-PS. Different resin cores have different swelling properties. Low swelling PS resins are a good candidate for simple peptide sequences, while higher swelling PEG and PEG-PS resins are ideal for longer peptide sequences. Consideration of swelling is important for optimizing peptide yield and reducing issues resulting from steric hindrance between growing peptide chains. Another important resin property is substitution, or the density of peptide anchor points, which is typically measured in millimole per gram. It indicates the loading capacity of the resin, or how many peptide chains can be synthesized per gram of resin. Like swelling, substitution is important for optimizing yield and mitigating steric hindrance. For lengthier and or bulkier sequences, a high swelling and low loading resin is always recommended. This information is disclosed by all commercial resin retailers. Please note that resin beads come in many sizes, with 100 to 200 mesh being most common. It is important to check resin mesh size compatibility with the manufacturer of your specific SPPS reaction vessels. Linkers are chemical spacers that connect the first amino acid to the resin core and determine how the peptides will be released, or cleaved, at the end of the synthesis. They play a crucial role in defining the C-terminal functional group of the final peptide, such as a carboxylic acid or amid. Common linkers include the Wang linker, which yields a free acid, and the Rink amide linker, which produces a C-terminal amid. Both linkers are widely used for their stability and predictable cleavage properties. For commercially available resins, linkers are nearly always already attached to the resin core. In SPPS, the amino group of the amino acid being added is initially protected or blocked for better reaction control, preventing unwanted side reactions and ensuring amino acids are added one at a time in the correct order. The most common protecting group used is f mock 9 fluorenyl methyloxycarbonyl because it is easily removed under mild basic conditions. Additionally, some amino acid R groups have functionality requiring protection from unwanted side reactions. While these protecting groups, PG, are stable throughout the duration of an entire peptide synthesis, they are easily removed once synthesis is complete. For the remainder of this segment, we will use this simplified depiction of an amino acid and its, if relevant, protecting groups. Let's return to our example peptide, bradykinin. We've established that the correct way to write its sequence is from N-terminus to C-terminus, but in SPPS, peptides are actually synthesized starting from their C-terminal amino acid. The protocol for attaching the first amino acid to the resin depends on the specific linker being employed, but it is always through its carboxyl group. Fortunately, many commercial resin suppliers offer resins with various amino acids already loaded. For our synthesis of Brady Kynin, let's assume we are using f mock Arg PBF Wang Protide resin and that the first amino acid, arginine, is already attached. Once the first amino acid is attached, the temporary f mock protecting group is removed to expose the free amine. The next amino acid, with its own protected amino group, is activated and coupled onto the growing chain. Steps 2 and 3 are repeated for each additional amino acid, extending the peptide chain.
Then the final FMOC group is removed. The protocol for removing the peptide from the resin can depend on the specific linker being employed, but typically involves treatment with trifluoroacetic acid. This treatment also removes the side chain protecting groups. Once cleaved, the peptide is precipitated from solution, analyzed with LCMS, and if required, purified on preparative HPLC. This concludes this SPPS basics video. As a reminder, we reviewed the basics of peptide synthesis, including key peptide terminology, approaches to peptide synthesis, and SPPS process and terminology. Thank you for your attention. Please don't hesitate to reach out to your CEM representative or synthesis.support at CEM.com with any questions.